Howdy, y'all. Caleb here. This past weekend, I, I finally got to go to a tournament. It's been a, it's been a little bit since I've gotten out into the tournaments, and I had one in this past weekend at Texas Toy Soldier, my local gaming store, and ha had a ton of fun. Got three games in, just a one dare, and I took Codal's Claw. Hmm. I've had the 12 Agrodons painted up. I think I, we had it in a team tournament not too long ago. But this one, I put in a full Seraphon list with 12 Agrodons and just wanted to have a, a fun time with some Codal's Claw. So, didn't want to think too hard with Starborn. <laughs> I just wanted to run forward and, and melee things. So, ended up going 2-1. and one, Had some fantastic games. So, I'll break down my list and then I'll kind of go through each game a little bit and show you deployment and what what mistakes I made and, and how I ended up winning just barely. <laughs> So here's my list. It was a Codal's Claw. I took Overshadow as my grand strategy, so I just need to kill off their battle line and keep mine alive, which is fairly easy to do when you have a lot of Agrodons and Source Warriors. Those things can be pretty difficult to kill. The big weakness of that is if they have battle line that they're just going to hide somewhere on the board, that makes it very difficult, and <laughs> you can lose them sometimes that way. Triumphs Inspired, uh, uh, Source Astralith Bear as my general, with Vengeful Defender, so that allows me to move some source in the hero phase, as long as they're within 12 inches of him. Which ends up being a lot shorter range once you're trying to fit all of this source within a 12-inch bubble of him. <laughs> Artifact Arcane Tome just gives me a little bit of casting from him, usually doing just Mystic Shield from him onto one of the units. I got a Skink Star Seer with Horror Frost, and I love the Skink Star Seer. Two cast wizard um, has a has a spell on his war on his war scroll that allows you to shut off wards. Didn't come quite as handy this tournament. I didn't really face anything with really good wards, but you almost got to take them because there's such good things out there with wards that you that's it's just such a good spell to have in your back pocket. I gave him horror frost and. That was kind of a deterrent against anybody charging my warriors. You know, I'm going to cast it on my warriors, get them up to Ren 3. You're not going to want to charge 20 warriors that have Ren 3 spears. Uh, so that that was a pretty effective in that. I kind of wish I had Merciless Blizzard on him, just as that extra defensive measure there to where if you do charge the warriors, maybe they don't have Ren 3 now, but I'm going to hit you with 46 mortal wounds. So I kind of wish I'd had that. It probably would have come in handy a couple times, but it's... You know, it's hard to choose between them. Horror Frost to, to always buff up stuff or Merciless Blizzard as a deterrent there. Here's where I put a lot of my points is kind of your variant here for Kotal's Claw is I spent 480 points on Gotrek. <laughs> I, I did this for a reason. I really like Gotrek. I've always liked him. I played him a whole lot right when he first came out and decided to go back to that, that wheelhouse. So Gotrek in this list provides a little bit of a unique roll. I've got Agrodons, as you can see below. I've got 12 Agrodons that can go all the way across the board and Alpha Strike if they need to. If I have to go first, I can send one or two units of them all the way across the board if I need to. In that turn, I can run Gotrek to mid-board. So you pretty much always have to run him turn one or try to for a long charge if, if they come towards you, which most people don't. So you know, my strategy is get the Agrodons in, Gotrek is kind of that second wave, and then I've got my third wave is the Source Warriors with minus three Rin coming in to, to mop up. So that's kind of my strategy in my head. I end up not actually doing that too often because I am a one drop and I end up going second all three games in this tournament. I, I had priority over my opponents. They had more drops than me, so I was able to choose second. So... I, did, I never really had to utilize that strategy, but that was kind of my thinking in what I wanted to do. The, basically, the entire list is damage reduction. Gotrek and all of the source do that. And then quite a bit of melee output. I have no shooting whatsoever. Well, Skinks have a little bit, but in fact, I don't even think I ever rolled their shots. Um, no shooting, not really a whole lot of magic damage. Uh, we have some magical buffs, but it's really just all about melee. So it's kind of fun. We've also got Agrodons, two units of them with the Spears. I do like the Spears because generally you can get uh, all-out attack on, on one unit. So you're hitting on threes and twos on the Spears. And I just, I'm a sucker for that rend. <laughs> so I do like the Spears. 20 Warriors also with Spears. I like, I like the extra 
range that those spears offer. With the spears, you don't have to do the whole little, like, getting one within an inch, all this kind of stuff. I just double rank them. It just makes them so much easier and more fun to play. Just push them in a rank at your opponent, and you're golden. Ten skinks there are just to kind of uh, help me guard Gotrek, really. Um, they'll score battle tactics. They're going to go for that skink battle tactic of capturing an objective with just skinks. Um, they can screen for whatever I need to. They bodyguarded a hero once or twice, but really they're they're kind of there to help help go trek. If if something's coming into them with like a horde, like say a horde of skeletons, you can surround them with skinks to where they can't get as many attacks into them, and you still have a chance to punch back. So all that in a battle regiment, 1980, 130 wounds, which I felt like was quite a few wounds to have go trek in your list, as you know almost a quarter of your list, and you still wound up with 130 wounds. No, that's not too bad. So that was my list. Definitely a fun, flavorful list. Lots of melee. And not a whole lot of thinking. Just go fight in the middle of the board. All right, game one. I'm playing against Keith, and he's playing Iron Jaws. I was kind of excited to see this list. It was a little bit of a different Iron Jaws list. And he had one of the big Mogruntas in his list. The new Big Pigs. So I was kind of excited to see what that guy did. He had a lot of of brutes in this list, um, which was interesting because you end up with a lot of attacks with those brutes. In fact, I think the last tournament I took Gotrek to, which was quite some time ago, I think he was killed by brutes. And so I was a little worried about him getting surrounded by those brutes and then just hacking him to death. But... Um, yeah, an interesting list here. He's got a couple units of Gore Gruntas. Oh, yeah, some minimum units of Gore Gruntas down there at the bottom. It came in at 1930. I think he was he was trying out some of the new stuff, like the Anvil Smasher and the the Big Pig. So it came in pretty low, guaranteed that triumph. Uh, definitely a fun, flavorful Iron Jaws list there. We're playing some battle plans from an upcoming GT the Slambo GT down in San Antonio, Texas. And they've added some twists to the to the GHB's battle plan. So all these are plans you've seen before, you've played before, but they all have little twists. Here, this one, when the objectives explode, you have a chance to heal instead of taking damage. So I, I kind of like this for Gotrek, because if, if he's on one that explodes and you have a chance to heal Gotrek, that's a, a pretty sweet gig there. A, a, a nice little prize from the pinata um, but on this battle plan if you have fewer victory points at the top of the battle rounds you get to explode and remove two objectives so that comes in pretty big and we'll look at the at the layout and we'll talk about that here in just a second so here is our deployment you can see my let me get a little pointer here you see my guys are all lined up here Oh, how in the world? There's already yellow marks on there. Let's see if we can clear those. Okay, I think I got those cleared off. I was practicing with that tool. Here we go. Um, so you can see my deployment here, and I've tried to keep all of my stuff in range of my Astral of Bear. He's right here. So we're trying to keep everything within 12 inches. You can see Go Truck is here in the middle, and my Agrodons are out on the flanks. So I did make him go first. And I don't think he got as good of runs as he was wanting. Uh, he may have wanted to try to push those those pigs into my ranks turn one, but wasn't quite able to make it that far. And so he ended up with his pigs kind of out in the middle. And that kind of got a, a pretty good layup for my Agrodons who pushed forward and were able to engage both of his units of big pigs. So on my turn, I was able to take out those big pigs. And I... He, he moved these guys up a little bit, but not not really much at all because he, he saw Gotrek here in the middle and knew that I was going to be pushing him forward. So he just wanted to try to, to converge on that middle section there and keep me from getting back into his back lines. Uh, that's one thing you don't want is Gotrek right in the middle of your army because that's usually a bad time. So feed him, feed him something, keep him occupied. Don't let him get to the important juicy part of your army. His, his big pig swung over this way, was kind of out of, out of the battle for a little bit. He, he scored a battle tactic on the board edge and was going to try to flank around my army and then ended up getting hung up on the Agrodons for a little bit. So, um, 
so on my turn, I think I got one more picture maybe. Yeah, you can see me engaging here. I, I made a critical error that turned out to kind of be a blessing, which uh, I'm, we're going to call it strategy. <laughs> um, here, I, my, my grand strategy is just get more units out of my territory. And all I need to do is make a, a short charge with Skinks, but make a longer charge with Go Truck. Um, I can't remember if he redeployed back a little bit or something. I don't remember exactly what it was, but Go Trek failed that charge. And so then I ended up not sending the Skinks in because I couldn't get the uh, the battle tactic regardless. So that left Go Trek and my Skinks just kind of hanging out here. And I failed my battle tactic turn one. <laughs> uh, great strategy there, Caleb. But what happened was that ended up being really good because that put me down on victory points after turn one. And that meant I controlled the board for basically the rest of the game. I was able to delete objectives as needed since I had fewer victory points. And I basically cleared his side of the board of objectives. And then I was able to just turtle up on my own. I was still able to push Gotrek forward eventually and kill off some units back here. I think I killed off his boss and that unit. And then just kept my Agrodons, pulled them back, put the Warriors on this objective, and got these Agrodons back. I was able to rally the Agrodons a couple different times after they had been in combat and cleared some stuff. But by you know the end of, end of the game, I had um, a lot of my units still alive and on my objectives. And he didn't have any objectives. So towards the end of the game, the points kind of ran away into my direction. So ended up doing pretty well there. Oh, you can see my go trek going into his brutes. There was a little bit of a scary situation there. I was able to uh, make a good charge into his mega boss, but then on my first activation, pile in to drag in the brutes. They did get to fight, but they couldn't quite get all of them in. So I think that was the preferable way to do it. Oh, you can see my my go trek here is he's been hanging out with coalesce for a while, and so he has sprouted a tail. <laughs> He has become coalesced himself. Uh, some might call him Sotrek, the Sotek Gotrek. So he he has got some scales, some spines, some a tail <laughs> in my own head narrative there. So that's that's justification. It's a narrative reason why I'm bringing Gotrek. So I ended up winning this game versus Keith. A lot of fun. Keith is always a, a great opponent to play. A lot of fun had between these two massive melee armies. And, you know, we got through all five rounds, and I think we still had time left over. That's, that happens when it's just uh, two melee forces going to the middle of the board and just crushing each other and having fun. So, great game. Game two is what I was hoping to avoid. <laughs> when you take Gotrek, you know that there are plenty of ways now to shut off wards. And so, if you can avoid those lists, then, you're, then Gotrek will be worth his points. If you run into those lists that can shut off wards, you're in trouble. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of those out there. So I, I was playing Esteban, and he's taking Soul Blight Grave Lords, and this is one of those lists that can shut off your wards. So he's got Legion of Blood, he's got two Vampire Lords on Zombie Dragon, and they have access to a heroic action that will allow their attacks to ignore wards. Ooh, that's terrifying for Gotrek, because he relies on that 3-up ward save to stay alive. If, if he doesn't have that, he's a four-up, eight-wound foot hero that is just easily wiped out. So, he's got that Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon. He also has Flaming Weapon on that one, just to give him some extra damage. Now, that won't really matter against Gotrek, but being able to shut off the ward is a big deal. His second Vampire Lord has a Cloak of Mists, which is makes him Im immune to Rend, uh, Ethereal. So he has a 3-up save, and you can't change it. He also has Neferata, who has a spell that does the same thing for the other Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon. So this list is the perfect counter for my army. Because I have a lot of high rend between Horror Frost and Agrodons are all minus 2. I can pump that up further if I need to. So he's ignoring all that with his two main pieces that are that are going to do all his work. And then he negates Gotrek. So this is just ah, the perfect counter to my army. So he's got those three big pieces. Vampire Lord, Vampire Lord, and Neferata. Lots of spells to cast there. He's got a couple units of Dire Wolves, which are really just screens. Some Death Rattle Skeletons to score objectives. And then some Banshees as a, a pretty unique little ally pick there. Two drops, so I am able to outdrop him. 
we're playing uh i don't even know what that word is but this battle plan here the twist here was not really that impactful you could that you could bet a command point to try to get an extra command point so i, I don't think anybody ever actually did that but this one, whoever goes second in round two, you get to pick which side the objective starts on, and then it kind of bounces all the way across the board, giving you more points depending on where it's at. Here's our deployment, and you can see I set up, uh, where is he, my Ashleth Bear here. And he's covering, actually this time, just the Warriors and the Agrodons here. Um, I had to, had to drop my list before his, but this allows me to kind of cover this objective with the warriors, I can get them onto that objective if I need to quickly. And the Agrodons have some flexibility to go wherever they want to go um, with Vengeful Defender. The Agrodons over here on this left hand side, I'm not as worried about doing Vengeful Defender, which is why I didn't put, I, I just, I literally couldn't put them in range. Um, but they can grab this objective and then I was going to plan on flanking them later in the game as needed or if uh, he pushes hard then I can push them in and start coming across the board that way. I've got Go Trek over here on the right with a screen of Skinks. I know he's going to be hunting him with one of those vampire lords and so I know it's inevitable. I know it's coming but I'm going to try to prevent it as best I can. The Skinks offer some ability to help with the redeploy. They get you know you roll two dice with the redeploy. They choose the highest one. I'm hoping that I can keep him off Gotrek until I get a chance to pick the fight. So Gotrek is going to try to uh, control these two objectives as needed, um, or at least keep them away from that. But Esteban, is, he's a good player, and he a brilliant strategy here. So, I mean, not brilliant, but a very good one that seemed very obvious to me once he did it to me, but I was like, ah, yeah, you're, you're thinking there, bud. He's, you've played this list before. <laughs> Um, so he he I made him go first, and basically all I did is he ran his dogs just right outside as close to me as possible, you know, just a couple inches away from my line, in a giant screen. He knows he's you know if he loses one, he's gonna lose half of it, but he doesn't really care that much. And then this next unit of dogs just came in to form another screen, um, which doesn't seem like it's you know he, he didn't do any damage to me turn one really, but all he's doing is he's just making it to where I don't have any good fights. So I'll leave a lot of my stuff back here for Vengeful Defender for the next turn. I get my Agrodons up on that objective, and I push Gotrek into the, the dogs. Charge around the backside, score this objective with Skinks, create a screen, and easily wipe out those dogs. That wasn't a, that wasn't a problem for Gotrek. But then we go to priority roll, and, it, and it's... Um, I win it, but what do I have? What, what's my choice? You know, my only choice is run some Agrodons across the board and hit his other screen because he's got another screen. So it did force me to give the turn away, uh, which I think was okay in this because I was able to choose this objective as the power one and it's going to start traveling to the right. So I was perfectly fine going second on this one. Um, I didn't want to just kill more screens, but it did leave Gotrek out in the open on the, the this objective with just a unit of skinks around him. And that provided the opportunity that he wanted. He, he brought in his dragons to try to take Gotrek. I know it was going to happen. You know, I'm going to try to prevent it the best I can with screens. But he's going to have to get into Gotrek. And we'll have to roll some dice and see what happens. So he does get into him. He tries. He's going to try to kill him here. He, he pops his heroic action to turn off wards. And on my redeploy, I rolled incredibly bad so you roll two dice on the screen redeploy and i rolled like two ones or two twos or something it was terrible so i, I really couldn't get gotrek surrounded as much as i wanted but in the end it didn't really matter he really spiked hard his shooting from the from one of the dragons and killed like all but one of the skinks anyway so he was able to get both of his dragons into gotrek and that's where it got interesting so he attacks the first time with the ward shut off, so the dragon that can shut off the wards, and he doesn't kill Gotrek. Whew. I think he left Gotrek with maybe three wounds, and so I was pumped. You know, I, I, I think he may have been, maybe he failed the roar, or maybe he roared him. I can't remember on this one. We were in combat here for a while. I'll, I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but Gotrek survived. I was like, ah, I've got a chance now. And so I get to fight back. I swing everything into the zombie dragon that hadn't attacked, but. Um, Gotrek does well. He takes off a lot of wounds off of him. 
spiked hard on the mortal wounds, but I left him with like one or two wounds left. And that's the worst thing you can ever do for Soul Blight. If you ever fought Soul Blight, never leave anything on one or two wounds because it's all going to come back. They're going to heal all of that back up. So that zombie dragon gets to fight, but Gotrek has his ward, so he doesn't really do much damage. And then Gotrek gets to attack again. At this point, I'm, I'm feeling confident because Gotrek did pretty well on the last combat activation. So I make the, the cardinal melee sin. Uh, say it with me. Don't split your attacks. But it's Gotrek. I'm thinking, okay, I've got to do like one or two wounds. I can't remember exactly how many it was. It was just one or two wounds to the, one of the zombie dragons. I'm going to try to put some hurt into the, the zombie dragon that was turning off my ward. So I can start doing some damage for the next turn. For my turn. Because I get to fight next. I mean, it's going to be my turn on the next one. So I, I think I put like three or four dice into the zombie dragon that had one wound left. And then the rest into the other one. Roll the first one. No sixes. Well, he's ethereal, so I know I'm picking all these up and rolling for sixes again. Pick them all up. All I need is one six. Just one six. Give me one six. Roll it. No sixes. So on like four dice, re-rolling, no sixes. was pretty brutal. <laughs> Sometimes statistics, you know, bite you. And you don't, you don't roll average. So I didn't get that. He made all his ethereal saves. All threes. And so that zombie dragon is left alive. Over onto the other dragon, I hit nice with the mortal wounds and I actually do some damage. And he's taking about half bracket. So that's the way that turn ends. On to, on to my turn. I have to charge some stuff in because I've got to do some... I've got to make sure and try to do some extra damage to this thing that has... Uh, that's shutting off my ward. See if I can kill it before it kills Gotrek. So... Oh, I had a brilliant strategy. Here we go. This was the strategy. Um, I'm Vengeful Defender. My, my Astralith Banner into range to do an Arcane Bolt. I cast the Ward Removal from the Starseer onto that dragon that had one wound left. So now he has no ward. It was only a six up, but I wanted to make sure. And then I cast Arcane Bolt. And it failed. <laughs> Uh, I just need to clear that one wound. So I I don't have any other shooting. I don't have any shooting. I have no way to take off that one wound in, in the hero phase. So I have to charge in my Aggradons. I charge in those Aggradons. I'm moving some other stuff around the board to take the rest of the board. But this is where the action is. I charge in some Aggradons. Um, I have to fight with Gotrek first. I have to fight into the one that has the ward removal. So I can't fight the one on the left that has one wound. I have to fight the, the black one there on the right. So I put all my attacks into that dragon, thinking hopefully I can kill it before it ever does any uh, damage back to me. And what happens? I get it down to like one or two wounds. Gosh. Ah! <laughs> so the black dragon survives the first Gotrek attack, which means he's going to have a chance to attack Gotrek back and kill it. Unless the Agronauts can do some damage. <laughs> we'll see. But first he gets to attack. So he attacks with the dragon on the left. Not into Gotrek, because Gotrek still has his ward to that dragon, but into the Agrodons. I'm hoping this is all making sense. Into the Agrodons, and he kills two Agrodons. But what does that do? That heals him back up. Now he doesn't just have one wound. He's back up to like uh, seven or eight wounds or something. Uh, and he's just starting to climb back up. My Agrodons get to activate next, do literally no damage. I think at this point they had Horror Frost on the Spears, because that was the only thing that was going to work. So they're hitting on ones, theoretically. Neferata was giving them minus, minus one to hit. Um, but all that Ren doesn't matter. These dragons make all their ethereal saves on everything. Agrodons do, it was like one damage to each of these things, maybe. It was like nothing. And then the Black Dragon that's shutting off Gotrek War he gets to fight back, and he ends up killing Gotrek in that turn. So at that point... <sighs> Uh, I'm a little heartbroken. <laughs> I had the chance to to put this game away. And I think it all started with splitting Gotrek's attack. If I hadn't split his attack, I would have killed the dragon on the left off. And then I could have put all my attacks into the black dragon. Maybe I could have done damage there. Even if I had lost Gotrek, it would have been in a much better place. With only one dragon left to defeat. So, I still have the board on the on the left-hand side. We can look back at this, this um, 
map here. I still had the board on the left hand side, but the objective at this point is popping over here. And I cannot, I never kill these two dragons. I think, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever killed them. And I think we eventually ended up calling it as the objective got here and then bounced to here. And he was able to keep the, the points going on me once it got over to that side. And I wasn't going to be able to score any of those because I was trapped in combat with these stinking zombie dragons. So, um, great play there by, by Esteban. A lot of fun. Uh, had some great moments here between these saves and all this melee melee attacks between Gotrek and these zombie dragons. It was to be honest, it was it was a little closer than I thought it should have been. I thought he was going to come out and wipe Gotrek on the first turn. I think he kind of thought he was too. And so when Gotrek survived, that let that made the game a lot more interesting. But the lesson here is don't split your attacks. <sighs> so lost that one, but still. Heck of a lot of fun. Game three, I'm playing Sebastian. And he's a, a, a great Seraphon player here locally. He plays a lot of Starborn. Uh, we've met up a few times. I, I, I can't remember what our record is between each other. But here he's playing Dracothian's Tail and a fairly standard loadout for the leaders. Uh, I think he's got some interesting choice for his battle lines here. But he's got Croak. He's got Star Master with Celestial Resonance to get extra summoning points. Merciless Blizzard on both the Slon and the Skink Oracle on Troglodon. Uh, so some great options there for Merciless Blizzard. Astrolith with the Arcane Tome to give him some extra summoning points. And then where I think it gets kind of interesting is the battle line. He's got three units of Warriors. And I really like the way he played them here. So this is really just a, you know, he's pushing them forward as a roadblock. So... Uh, he's able to to kind of manipulate the board a little bit with these warriors, make you go into them. You know, there's going to be a lot of units that just can't clear 20 wounds on a three up save, even if they're not minus one damage in Star in Starborn. And what that does is that allows him to keep you within range of all of his spells without you getting all the way into his lines. So I really like the way he played it. After after playing this game, I feel like I I. Uh, might want to split my big block of warriors into a smaller units, kind of like this, for a little bit more board control. I'll talk to that about that when I look at the list after all this, all these games here. But I also had some Source Guard and some Pterodon Riders. Pterodon Riders are nice for high movement, high mobility. Does a little bit of mortal wounds. Uh, can score the the Skink objective really easily. Aethervoid Pendulum is an endless spell, and Malevolent Maelstrom, which is uh, so annoying. It's it's a great spell when you're casting it. It's really annoying when it's being cast against you. So uh, he's got Cor Corbatine's Andorian Acolytes to get extra Primal Dice and Battle Regiment. So four drops. I was able to outdrop him. I was able to stay far enough back to kind of keep him from getting into me. The one thing I was happy he didn't have here was a Starseer. Because <laughs> if he had had a Starseer, that would have been two armies in a row that could shut off my wards. So thank you, Sebastian, for not bringing a Starseer. Because if that had been the case, I would have had no chance whatsoever. Even here, I don't think I have a chance of winning this game. Um, spoiler alert, I, I, I win this one, even though I don't think I should have. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about that here in, in a minute. So a nice list there, I like it. We're playing this battle tactic. The twist allows a reroll for any roll, which is kind of nice. Um, but this one also has removing objectives too. A little bit more of a standard layout here. I like this one because I can I can push Gotrek all the way across the board pretty quickly into your lines. I think we're you know we're only nine, or we're only eighteen apart on this battle plan, and so I can push him onto the one of those three objectives pretty quickly in this in this battle plan. Here's our deployment and I've got um, Gotrek here in the middle. This might not seem like a very good spot for him since this giant terrain piece is here, but since I didn't know where he was gonna put anything, it allows me to go either direction around this. It may take me a little bit longer, but uh, with a shorter deployment, I, I, can, I can make it around that thing fairly easy and get into his units at some point. Um, uh, interestingly enough, I didn't even put my Realm Shaper down in this game. So I was looking at it. He had put his over here on the right-hand side as a choke point there between that those terrain pieces. Um, and I just decided not to put mine down. I, I, there wasn't really a good place over here and over here. I knew that he would just be blowing it up all game. So I, I didn't want to stand too close to it. 
So I just didn't even put it down. And I don't think it hurt me. I didn't, I didn't want to block anything. He didn't really have much deep strike that I was too worried about. Um, getting into melee with something on my back line. So I was able to screen stuff out anyway. So I lined up some of the Agrodons a little bit further back. Warriors over on this right side just to, just to keep him from trying anything funny over on my objective. And I can push them onto that one if needed. Um, and then I'm really just going to try to work this side, get Gotrek up the middle. And I'm going to try to stay away from his spells as much as possible. But Gotrek doesn't really care too much about his spells. So I'm going to send him in and put him in range of everything that I can. So um, let's look at, uh, I did take a picture of Sebastian's army. I think his, he's uh, a great painter here. He's a beautiful Seraphon army. And since we're a Seraphon channel, we got to show off some Seraphon armies when when I get to play him. So uh, really good looking army there. I liked playing against his stuff a lot. Oh, okay, okay, hold on. So turn one, I make him go first. He doesn't. He does a little bit of damage in the hero phase, not a whole lot. Uh, Crook miscasts <laughs> turn one, so that's always fun. Um, he teleports a unit of warriors, and I think, if I remember correctly, correctly, I think they got into combat with some agrodons, which was kind of annoying. <laughs> um, but he was able to push in and keep my agrodons from charging. I think that's what happened. But otherwise, he he just ran some units up to kind of create some screens. Um, but left a small little gap right here. And that's called the Gotrek gap. <laughs> so, um, on my turn, I was able to make a really long charge with Gotrek. You know, it's probably like a 9 or something or a 10. I'm pretty sure I had to re-roll it. But I'm able to get Gotrek from, from you know, 4-inch four, four movement here. But he's able to get into some source warriors that were stationed right here and he had moved up some of his other stuff just to get closer range for spells on the next turn and all of a sudden that puts a lot of his army in danger you can see here uh go trek is moving <laughs> within range of that so this is after my turn i've cleared his screens that were there with go trek was able to um, pile in and kill off two different units and I'm sitting real pretty here in a game that I did not think I should be able to win. All of a sudden, going into the priority roll for two, Gotrek is three inches away from the Troglodon, about four inches away from the Slon, and the Lord Croak is just right here. I mean, he is not far away either. So I can either charge here, I can charge into this gap. I've got lots of options. But that's one thing you don't want is Gotrek right in the middle of all these squishy heroes. So, uh, well, I mean, Croak's not exactly squishy, but Gotrek gets into him. He's he's dying. So I'm feeling pretty good. Even if I don't win priority, you know, what's he going to do? He's going to try to run away from me, but I'm already in his ranks. Um, so he can only get so much out of there. I, I'm feeling pretty confident. And I think we both were looking at the board going, okay, I think I've got the win here. But... The dice had other <laughs> other things in mind, so he gets he gets the turn into two. So I'm able to remove some objectives, but he makes some good charges with some source warriors, and I think he charged me with warriors and guard maybe. And I'm able to clear the guard. The warriors take off quite a few wounds off Gotrek, leave him on a couple wounds left, um, and I'm unable to clear the warriors in my turn. That's twenty wounds. I mean, that's a lot of wounds to do. He did have a 6-up ward save from the Astrolith that's standing right there to the left. That's also in danger. Um, but I wasn't able to clear the Warriors, which was a, a killer. Because that means in my turn, I've got to spend my turn killing off like three or four Warriors that were left. So just brutal um, that Gotrek couldn't clear that. And, I mean, that was a lot to ask from him. It was, you know, 10 guard and, and 10 Warriors. I mean, that's 30 wounds, but... You know, he can do that damage, but just he couldn't get it done that time. So, unfortunately, on my turn, Gotrek is now just stuck clearing those. Okay, well, going into the next turn, I'm feeling good. Gotrek is still here. These things, he's he's got away from me a little bit, but still, a lot is in danger. Um, at this point, I think he summoned in some more guard or warriors or something. Um, and he gets the turn again. <sighs> so, I'm able to remove some of his objectives. That's keeping the game close. Um, but I'm not able to put the finishing blow in. Um, he brings in some summons. He makes all those charges. He gets into Gotrek again. 
And it may have been that turn that he finally finished off Gotrek. Maybe. I can't remember if he, if I healed up that turn or not. Um, I think he may have finished him off that turn. I put enough into him, all like a, as many spells as he could, all that kind of stuff to be able to kill him off. Charged in a couple of different units and finished him off. So um, now I'm a little disappointed because I've lost my big threat that was in, in his lines. And now things are starting to look down on me. But, <laughs> uh, where things were going poorly for me with Gotrek in the middle of his lines, things were about to go very poorly for Sebastian. So he had miscast Croak his first turn, did, did quite enough, did quite a bit of damage in the second turn enough to help out and kill off Gotrek, but turns three, four, and five, he miscast with Croak. <laughs> Out of five turns, he miscast Croak four turns. Oh, just absolutely brutal. That's the thing that will kill a Starborn list is a miscast on a Croak in a crucial point. And not only did he get one miscast, not two, not three, but four miscasts for Croak throughout this game. And I think ultimately that is probably what swung the game in my favor. Uh, here's how the game ended up looking at the end. At this point... We only, this objective and this objective were the only ones still active. Um, he needed to put the final nail in the coffin on the Agrodons that had been over here fighting on this stinking objective all game. He just kept teleporting warriors over here, summoning warriors, sending them over here, making charges, and I just could not clear those those warriors enough. Because you know what? Agrodons, when they're not charging, when, when you can't buff them up properly, they're just not doing enough damage um, against warriors, which was unfortunate. Um, but he needed to do a couple things. He needed to get a battle tactic, which was kill uh, an Agrodon unit that was right here. It only had maybe three or four Agrodon. Uh, maybe three Agrodons. I can't remember exactly. Um, so he's hitting them with spells. He's hitting them with spells. And then I, I'm able to pull one. And now he's out of range of Merciless Blizzard. So it was probably a, a mistake not to do Merciless Blizzard first and do a, a big Mortal Wound Spike to, to finish it off. But out of range of, of Merciless Blizzard. And then, okay, but not all's lost. He's still got Croak. And then Croak miscasts. And he's not able to finish off that unit and get the, the battle tactic of killing a unit with spells. And so... He fails that battle tactic. He charges on this objective, scores the objective, but it's a little too little too late. And he is not able to, let's see, I think he got his battle tactic, which was just keep his slot alive. And I got mine, which is keep battle line alive and kill all his. I killed all his starting battle line. Um, he had been able to summon more in. But um, with that, I was able to win by one point. One point in a game that was just like up and down. At one point, I thought it was an easy win for me. And then it was like, okay, well, now it's an easy win for Sebastian. But the dice decided to, to throw us both a curve and ended up with probably the closest game I've played in quite some time. So Snuck uh, stole a win from the Jaws of Defeat there by one point in a, a wonderful game versus Sebastian there. So in conclusion, would I take this list again? Yeah, I think so. I, I had a lot of fun. Uh, this was this was definitely not a mentally taxing list. <laughs> um, so if you're looking for a fun list that is pretty easy to transport, uh, this this could be the list for you. Uh, we we do have some you know decent magic. We've got three spells we can cast. Um, none of it does a lot of damage, so I may want to kind of alter things to be able to do some damage in the spell in the hero phase to help out with some battle tactics. Um, I think if I could take. Merciless Blizzard instead of Horror Frost, I might do that. Um, I might split some warriors up into two different units. Basically, nobody ever really charged into the warriors trying to take them off an objective or anything. Uh, the warriors were never killed. Uh, they really weren't in combat all that often. Um, so I think if I split them up into two different units, I, you know, they're not as big of a threat, but I can push them around the board a little bit more. I think I was just convinced by how Sebastian was playing his warriors. Pushing them forward, bogging me down, just enough wounds to last through most attacks um, that they become quite annoying. <laughs> so I kind of like it that way. Skinks did what they were supposed to do, so I, I still like them. 
Uh, Skinks at 90 points provide a, 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 a good role there as a battle line, as something to score battle tactic as a screen. Uh, so I like them. Agrodons, fantastic. You do have to make the charges with them to make them worth their while. You know what? I never did Vengeful Defender this entire game. I can't remember if I talked about this already, but I never did Vengeful Defender really on the Agrodons in this game. I think it was because I was always going second. Um, so if I was forced to go first, which I think you would in a bigger, in like a GT where you have five games, you'll probably end up going first, even at a one drop. And at that point, I, you, you almost have to have that ability to threaten the other opponent. Um, it also just made people deploy differently because I knew that the Agrodons could get over there if I chose to go first. So um, I I don't know that I would go away from Vengeful Defender. I think in Kotal's Claw, you have to, you, that's kind of what you have to take. Um, because it just provides so much use. So overall, I like the list. Go Trek is, is a lot of fun. Unless you run into a list that can shut off his ward, that gets a little scary. Uh, and there are those lists out there. Um, but I think that slot there has some, has some interesting uses. I, I kind of toyed around with, do I take a Mega Gargan here? And then I could upgrade my Skinks to Chargers or add in an Endless Spell, or do I take Go Trek? I'm also kind of looking at that new Ionis Cryptborn. He fits in here at 400, you know, that 400 spot as an ally too. So, interesting. Anyway, I like the list. It was a lot of fun and glad I got to play some games. Hope you all enjoyed it. We'll see you all next time.